All right, uh, tensions are somewhat high in many places of business across the country, and a major point of contention between employers and employees is whether to return to the office full time. Uh, it's at the point now where some staffers are ready to quit their jobs over the matter. So let's bring in Eleanor Hawkins to discuss. She's a communications reporter for Axios, and she's written about this. Uh, so, Eleanor, we've seen some layoffs from companies uh, over the last year. Um, how is how are employers uh, approaching this return to work policy? My guess is that if there are some people that feel strongly enough about it to quit, it's because it's the flip side of this argument that the job market seems relatively robust. Yeah, I think it's incredibly important to point out that we're still talking about this about three years later. We left the offices about three years ago, and here we are still discussing the return to work. It's a key sticking point for many employees. They've embraced workplace flexibility. And as you pointed out, we're seeing that those companies that are requiring or mandating employees return back five days a week are being met with pushback, both internally and externally. They're seeing their town halls leak. They're seeing viral moments pop up, but they're also seeing petitions being formed. And as you pointed out, quitting in general. The other thing that we're noticing is that workplace flexibility continues to be a priority for job seekers. That's something that they're looking for as they're applying for jobs. Anecdotally, several executives I spoke with said that the jobs that they post that require in-person are not receiving as many applicants as the one that are hybrid. So the mm. demand is still very much there. So one of the things I found sort of really interesting about the article is that, you know, not only is it the shifting workplace that managers are trying to figure out, but a lot of companies are preparing for the possibility of a recession. Like you pointed out, we're seeing layoffs and bosses are under pressure. And so they're, you know, digging into their toolbox, trying to figure out how to motivate people, trying to figure out how to make their bosses or CEOs or whatever happy. And so I thought this was really fascinating. The expert you talked to said there is a focus on the customer and less of a focus on the employee. Mm. Yeah, so over the past three years, we've seen countless executives tout that employees are their greatest assets, employees are their most critical audiences. But according to a recent survey from Columbia, we found that that's actually not true when it comes to the messaging and when it comes to what executives are saying, particularly on earning calls. They're focusing more on the customers. Um, and then when they do mention employees, it's usually in a, in a negative connotation. So. Um, so, so there is this shift back to prioritizing a different stakeholder, which is the consumers. And as you mentioned, it's likely due to the economic pressures that many business leaders are facing. Mm. Uh, so with the shifting workplace in 2023, um, is the corporate loyalty between employers and employees, is that a myth or is that still there? I'm not in the business of myth busting, but what I will tell you <laughs> is that Many of the executives that I speak with, most of whom are in people operations or communications, they say that there are three main priorities for employees. They care about job security, they care about share price, and they care about flexibility. And so I think that flexibility piece is really, really interesting because it shows that while they are very interested in the performance of the company, they need and want that flexibility. Um, and maybe they're not willing to uh, go all in on corporate loyalty. I have a question, Eleanor, mm -hmm. just as a follow up. I, I, what, what, are they, what are they telling you about? So let's say there is a manager who's got a department of people who are a mix of hybrid and, 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 and the person who is most visible, because this is the thing we talk about a lot, right? Mm -hmm. The person who's most visible, who the boss can see every day, mm -hmm. interact with every day, grab a cup of coffee with every day. Um, and the other uh, employee who's a hybrid or even work from home and is rarely ever seen in person, even though they do stellar work, what the career advancement opportunities are like down the road. Because that's just human nature at, at the end of it, right? You, you're not going to necessarily ding somebody for being hybrid, but you might have an affinity for somebody who you interact with on a daily basis. Yeah, which right. I think is almost a, it's, it's almost a, that's a whole other conversation, I think. But I want to hear what Eleanor has to say. Oh, well, there's a name for it. It's called presentation bias, right? So presentation it's, it's, bias. Yes, favoring people who are in front of you, who are presenting in person. Um, so 
early on when hybrid started to become the norm, many companies were were doing presentation bias training for their managers to make sure that they weren't favoring one employee over the other. But I will say, we are finding more and more employees who are going into the office and then they end up sitting on Zoom no matter what. Mm -hmm. Some of them are in the same office space and they're sitting on Zoom in different rooms. So we definitely have become accustomed to this virtual way of communicating and presenting. Um, I, I do I do think that there are opportunities for in, interpersonal connection. The water cooler talk, as we all know, is is important for, for building. But what we've seen is that more and more companies are opting for intentional retreats. So gathering all their people at once during certain touch points, maybe it's quarterly, maybe it's annually. And that's one of the ways that they're trying to work around this presentation bias, and also a way to form interpersonal connections among the team. Uh, Eleanor Hawkins is really interesting. Yeah. Like, you know, what I learned is that it's all about, you know, a lot of it is just about the delivery. Everyone wants the company to succeed. Everyone wants the customer to be happy. But if the messaging is the employees aren't as important as the customer, then the employees may not want to come into the office. You got to make them feel good about coming in. And you have to show them that you trust them, that you trust that they're doing the work, whether you can see them or not. It's all about trust. And it's also about making sure they understand what the company goals are, what the mission is, and how they're contributing to that in their role. Great. Eleanor Hawkins, thank you so much. Thank you.